Okay, I am so jazzed right now. Got the mag drill out, got to open the box, got to get my stuff out. Yeah, the tools, the bits, and I didn't have to go to three places to get it. And I'm gonna put them away and close the box because this is, I'm only drilling one inch holes in this project. So, yep. Yep. All right, now close the lid, latch it, sweet. And then if I need to go on a project somewhere, ta-da, everything's right there. Oh, and the other thing, look, I forgot. There's the mag brush hanging right there. I hung it out kind of far because the magnet wants to go in, stick on that. I don't know if that's gonna weaken the magnet or not. I don't know anything about magnets. Maybe you guys know better, but I didn't want it swinging into this and bouncing and sticking to that. So it's kind of hanging out a little bit farther, but it seems to not bang into that. So yeah. All right, let's get to drilling. Okay, mop, right? M-O-P, magnet, oil, and power. <laughs> That is a perfect one inch hole right there. Hopefully my hydraulics aren't gonna destroy this. I have a feeling that they might. Um, the pressure from the blade and the fulcrum effect is gonna screw this up, but we're gonna find out. And if that's the case, I'll rebuild it or reinforce it. This is the steel I could find in town. I went to like three stores looking for steel. Um, my steel shop would have it. It's, you know, a 40 minute round trip and it's gonna be super expensive, but um, and it takes about 30 minutes when I get there to get what I want. So it's kind of slow, but they always have what I want. But I'm going to try this. Might get away with it, might not. Okay, I've got one more to drill. We're going to grab our mag brush from right down here. And clean this up just so we don't have a bunch of shavings. I'm going to turn the magnet off here just so it's not competing. Maybe that's a thing, maybe it's not. Ugh. Oh, there's the slug too. That's a 3-8 slug right there. Okay, let's get as much of this stuff out here that we can. Kind of grabs everything, doesn't it? I'm even gonna clean up the floor a little bit with this. Okay, kind of a mess, yeah. But got it cleaned up the floor, cleaned up the drill stand. A few of them jumped over the top, didn't they? But I guess I can get rid of them by doing that. Good. Man, that's so much easier than a regular broom because the broom just gets full of the metal. And then everywhere you sweep with the broom later, it's, yeah. Drops that metal everywhere because it holds onto it. Put that right there. Ta-da! Whew, it's early March. It's a good day to be working inside. even shuts itself off and that is a 90 degree cut right there baby yep see I didn't have it clamped down quite tight enough and it walked but we still got the hole drilled it's a tiny bit off center but that my friend is a good fit and this is not going to get a lot of articulation you know I'm going to move it three or four times when I'm you know plowing snow or whatever Ha <laughs> ha. 
That is so cool. Geese sitting on the pond. They're flying off in the snow. That is so cool. Okay, so sorry. Basically, I'm so glad that uh, people comment on my channel. So um, a commenter, his YouTube channel is Driftwood and Sagebrush. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but uh, his input was got me thinking and uh, made me change a couple things. So I appreciate your comment a lot. And so what I'm going to do here is try to get this more inboard. Um, as you can see that since I mocked this up and this is in full tilt this direction, I was worried the cylinder would come over so far that the edge of the cylinder would hit this right here. And I thought, well, I just cut a little piece out of there. It wouldn't be a big deal if it hits. Um, I can just make some clearance there. But obviously I can bring, this is like an inch here almost. So I can cut an inch off here and bring this inboard this way, get the cylinder closer to the spine of the blade frame. Okay, so also here, same thing. Look at this, I was worried that as this tilted this way, that this would kick over so far that it would hit. And I've got well over an inch there, inch and a half. Well, that's probably two inches right there between there and there. So I can bring this in quite a ways as well. Okay. Um, I'm also doubling this three eighths. I was originally going to use three eighths here and three eighths here, but all I could find was three eighths, uh, two inch in town. Um, that's all they had in stock. I went to three different stores and anyway, so I ended up using just the two inch that leaves for not much space around here. So I went ahead and doubled it. So this is two, three, eight. So that's well over half an inch thick, right? So, and this will be half an inch thick. Now, my question was, do I put the other plate, the other three eighths piece on top of this or on the bottom of this? And I think the answer is going to be on top because the top of this spine right here, I'm setting these two on top here. And if we follow that spine up, there's this piece. And I think that's quarter. That might not be three eighths, but this is definitely three eighths. I measured it. So um, basically we're going to end up at the same height if I weld that second three eighths piece right here. So I'm just going to butt it up here. I'll butt weld it here. I'll burn it in across here. I'm going to burn them all together. And um, of course, I'm going to burn it in all the way around on the bottom. And then I'll weld them all together with a pin in, of course, to hold it in place so it's all perfectly lined up. And then that should be level right across here. Okay. This height should be pretty dang close to this height right here. So thank you for your comments, guys. I appreciate your input, especially when I'm doing something like this. Um, I'm so glad I put out, I almost waited to put out part one so I could put out part one, part two, and part three all at once. But then I wouldn't have gotten that feedback. And I'm so glad I did because that's helped me double this up, get it closer to the spine. And, um, also make sure it's perfectly level because if this isn't level right let's just say i welded a bracket down here and i had a bracket up here and yeah it would work but it's eventually going to stress and bend my brackets um especially if i hit uh like this commenter said if i hit this on a culvert or something it's going to really put a lot of stress on the system here okay cool Okay, I've been working and working here and forgot to video. So here we're catching up. So two pieces of three eighths thick, two inches wide, one inch hole. Um, these are just uh, three sixteenths right here and right here. Give it a couple supports, but for lateral support, um, I butted this up against here and welded it all the way around and then welded this up here. Made three good solid passes. And um, I don't, I don't think this will go anywhere. I wasn't able to get welding up under here, getting it beat up underneath this part right here. Doing the same thing over here. Mirror image. And so and this is what it looks like. And We'll get those burned in all the way around, get this burned in all the way, three passes back here, and then I should be done with the structural part of it. Let's just get this squared up now and get it burned in. I'm squaring it up to the frame right here. Now that I have a bunch of welding along this edge here, I'm having to kind of eyeball it to get it square. And if it's off, you know, 
the 16th it's not gonna hurt anything because the throw on this 8 inch cylinder now that I've almost there okay I would say that's pretty good from the line now that I pulled the pins instead of being way out here I pulled them in the throw is even further when the piston goes out it turns the blade even further much further than I than I'm ever going to use it so even if this is off about a sixteenth or so I'm not too worried all right let's get this tacked Okay, got the phosphoric acid on it. <laughs> you can see where it heat penetrated and melted the paint from the other side, um, from welding the back side. I turned it upside down to do that. But, um, you know, looking at this, I just like, man, I know some of you guys with better, you know, more engineering minds than mine would say, oh, it would have been a lot simpler just to put, you know, and it might have been just simpler just to take a piece of half inch plate, you know, bring it up here like that, weld it on, and drill a hole in it right there and put one right there. Um, I didn't have any half inch plate, I'm just kind of using what I could get and what I had laying around too. So I think it'll work, but um, I think in hindsight, I probably would have just made this one half inch plate right here and the same thing right there. And it would add a lot of weight to it, um, but it would be very structurally sound, I think. And uh, I'm not sure I'd do this any different, except maybe I may end up welding some supports from here to here, some gussets, like there to there. Um, I'm hoping it won't break, but it might. And if it breaks, I'll fix it and try to make it better. Okay, we'll let this dry. We'll get it painted and get it on the tractor, and maybe it'll work.